Welcome to the R video tutorial on importing data via the QuantMod package. What we're going to learn how to do today is install the QuantMod package and read some data from the internet for various securities. This should be pretty easy and this should be a pretty short video. Now if you're not familiar with R, you might want to go back and look at some other videos to get, become more familiar with it, but this should be pretty simple for us to work with. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is install the package. I've actually already done it, but I'm going to run it again. And you can see what happens down in the console below. You can see it loading all of the packages. It's going to take it a couple seconds to do this. Uh, once it's done all of it, it'll uh, store them over here in your packages. Oh, if you go to the packages tab. Now what I'm going to do now is load the library so I can use those functions. Okay, and it's done with that. And it included some other little warnings here, which you should be aware of, but it don't worry about those at the moment, minute because everything will work and I'll explain the little warnings to you. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get some symbols. So get some data from the internet for various securities. So we're going to use AAPL, which is the uh, Apple stock. So what we're going to use is we're going to do this two ways. The first thing we're going to do is get symbols. And if you notice right here, it shows up with what we're going to do. And then you're just going to put in here whatever you are interested in. So AAPL. And this will give us all the time uh, from the beginning of the, the data set that is on the Internet. And let's see what this does. Now, you're going to have to write this to a variable sooner or later. But notice this says this is messages shown once per uh, session. And it's giving you a warning because it's creating a data set called, over here called AAPL. Now, you may not want it to be called AAPL. I don't like it being called AAPL because it doesn't make my code dynamic. I want my code to be dynamic so that I always can work with uh, a specific syntax. So I'm going to copy and paste this because I love copy and paste, and you should too. So let's see here. Hold on. Let me copy and paste this. And... Now what I want to do is I actually want to write it into a variable. So I'm going to write this into, uh, I'll call it stock one, because maybe I want to have more than one stock here that I want to pull from. Now what it's going to do is it's going to also create another data set. It's going to go out, grab the data, and now it says stock one is AAPL. And you can actually look at these data sets. So if I bring this up, you can see AAPL.open. Uh, the high price, low price, the close price, the volume, and the adjusted price. Okay, and that adjusted for stock splits and stuff. Um, so the next thing we might want to do is look at stock one and see what it looks like. So let's see here. Stock one. And you just see it says AAPL. It doesn't actually give us the data. So that's one of the things we're going to want us to do. And the reason it didn't give us the data is we actually need to put an option on here. So when you're doing get symbols, you need to put this option in there and in order for it to do the right thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually look in the help here real quick because I want you to understand what else you can get out of this. So uh, instead of me just saying, oh, this is everything get symbols can do, there's lots of things that get symbols can do that I can't show you. But it's going to pull off data from various places. Now, here is this idea of auto assign. Okay. Auto assign is what I'm interested in. I want auto assign to be equal to false so that I can give it the value. So auto assign equals false. And this will change this so that we can actually put this data into a data frame instead of it being in a specifically variable. Now, again, even here it says AALP uh, open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted. But it has put it into uh, a data set that we can work with later. Okay, so this has allowed us to pull the data and assign it into a data set that we might want, which then we could use for various information. For example, we might want to actually plot this. But before we plot it, let's put a comment into our code here so that we know what we did. So we added, wrote the data set not data swat, into the stock 
one variable or data frame. I'll put here slash data frame. Okay, so that gives us something to work with. Now, the other thing we might want to do is just plot this thing. So plot stock one and see what pops out here. So if I plot stock one, what do I get? I'm going to get a picture down here. And this is a different picture than you would get if you use the traditional time series plot. And part of the reason it's different is it actually gives you uh, all of these division lines along here. And uh, it actually puts the dates along here along the bottom, whereas you use standard time series, it doesn't really do that. It tells you the beginning time period and the ending time period. And you can see that today is actually Monday, the uh, June 18th. But it has the data through Friday, the 15th of June, 2018. And you can see this is the price of the stock as it went along for AAPL. Now, is it the price of the stock or is this the actual volume? Well, this is one of the things we need to play with because often you will pull the wrong thing in a plot. So my guess is we need to go back and look at this. So what if we did plot here, stock one, and then dollar sign. And here I actually want to plot the close so that I'm clear on what I am plotting. Don't just dump in here, plot something and expect it to do the right thing. Okay, now this looks more like a plot that I would expect for Apple. Notice that it keeps going up in price. It's really expensive right now. Again, our time frame is listed. It lists the data set and the uh, name of the stock here. So it does change the plot function somewhat. And that's a good thing for some of us and a bad thing for others. But anyway, this is a way you can do this. Uh, there's some other functions that are also in here, but we're going to skip over those at the moment because we're going to want to do them in the next videos, such as getting the returns. Uh, the uh, quant mod package has a way for us to get daily returns, to get weekly returns and monthly returns. And we can then use those to get an empirical distribution for what the returns look like so that we can make informed decisions about the stock. All right, but we'll do that in the next video. So see you there. Thank <laughs> you.